Chas and Dave, how are you? Hi, Alex. Uh, lovely, Alex. It's nice to see you, and I'll tell you why, because whenever I hear your names mentioned, I know I'm going to smile. Well, that's nice to know. That's bringing good. sunshine to the world. That's it. Do you get that a lot, where people just enjoy seeing you and listening to you? We do, as it happens. I think we're, we're basically happy blokes. I mean, we're not comedians or anything, but we're happy people, and uh, hopefully it rubs off on other people. Yeah, they smile when they see us in the street, and that, yeah, it's good. Do you ever get bored of being nice and happy? No, it's not, we, we don't work at it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because there are some acts that are very miserable, aren't there? I mean, there's the Verve and people like that that seem to like to do that kind of negative, reflective music where you want to kill yourself at the end of it. <laughs> you guys do the opposite, which is you want everybody to party, don't you? Well, it's, um, it starts off with rock and roll, really. Rock and rollers, uh, we, we were growing up, we were t young teenagers when rock and roll came out. And uh, which is uh, probably the best pop music that has ever been, and that rubbed off on us. And we uh, we were in bands playing rock and roll, and that's basically what Chaz and Dave is really it's, rock and roll with a bit of music. Called. It's non political music. It's like Chaz just said it's rock and roll, proper rock and roll. We're talking about fifties. The real thing is is a good happy music. It's uplifting. It makes you feel good. And it still does now you know, when you hear, hear them early records. It still does it for, for both of us. It seems to me that the reason for your success is the fact that you're normal guys. You've not had any airs and graces about you. You've not changed who you are, where you come from, how you speak. You're just normal guys. Is that very important to you? Well, yeah. Um, that's exactly what we we did. When we, me and Dave got together many years ago, we decided to... Uh, we loved the rock and roll stuff, as I've already, already said, uh, but we wanted to write songs about things that we knew about and sing in our own accents become ourselves really you were the first to do that though weren't you was that a risk in a rock and roll way we were the first i think uh we didn't look at it as, as a risk we was excited by the, the prospect of doing it when we first started to write songs because we hadn't done much writing before we got together to write songs we'd just been musicians in bands we'd done a little bit of writing but we was we got right into it the best way to find yourself, any musician, is to sit down and try and write songs, and that is the, the best way to discover what you're all about yourself. You've had so many hits, and they're also re recognisable. We're going to play some of them in a moment from now. We're going to ask you which you'd like to play, because you've got this new album we should mention as well called Greatest Hits, which has got uh, 20 of your biggest hits. And um, uh, you don't seem to have changed much either, by the way. That was something I was going to comment. I mean, you, you don't seem to have got much older. I mean, what, well, what is nice. it? Oil of Oule? What, what do you take? <laughs> My mum always said that <laughs> it's music that keeps you young, and so I, I believe what she said. <laughs> Did you ever dream you'd have a Greatest Hits? Because, I mean, this must be a good accolade for an artist that, you know, 20 years down, the line people still want to buy songs that they probably bought 20 years ago yeah well, we've got quite... a re, re um, emergence of Chaz and dave really i mean we did glastonbury this year which was absolutely fantastic over the last two or three years we've we've been gaining a, a real genuine younger following without trying i mean we've just been ourselves all the way through it and they've discovered us and it's fan it's a fantastic period yeah, so we've always had up to uh, the, the greatest hits cd yeah, we've always had a following uh, like, right across the board, but like Chaz said, this uh, this last two or three years, a lot of the uh, younger people are coming to see us, especially at festivals like Glastonbury, and uh, we knew something was happening by doing the other festivals, because they was going balmy for us, you know? I don't know whether I've got this wrong, but it seems to me the kids today are sick of the pre-manufactured pop idol type of music. They want people that are real, that actually do the business, play and write and have an act, because that seems to be missing now. You can perform and, you know, the West Lights of the world, don't get me wrong, they're huge, they're whopping, but what's their act? And that's something that you guys have always had, haven't you? Yeah, you're definitely right there, Alex. My son said exactly the same thing. He said, because... Uh, Talking to him a couple of years ago when we started to gain a, a new younger following through the Libertines, really, they, they helped a long, long way to say uh, when they stated that it was because of us when they were younger that made them want to pick up an instrument and try and learn to play and become musicians themselves. But my son, he said, uh, he said that the, the reason that, that you're... Uh, becoming so popular is there's you know exactly what you just said there's there's no one around that uh, they can go and see an act enjoy themselves see some good music uh everything 
thrown into one and come out and say what a good time they've had. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We'll take a piece of music. We're going to come back and talk about how hedonistic and showbiz your, your lives were uh, back 20 years ago. I want to know what that was like because that must be interesting. We're also going to talk about Glastonbury and Pete Doherty and people like that that have backed you and given you this uh, refound youth, really, and uh, brought you back on the telly and got everybody talking about you. We're going to take a piece of music from this new Greatest Hits album. What is your... We'll talk, we'll talk to you both. We'll, we'll take one from yeah, each of you. Sure, yeah. Chaz, what is your number one song that you love to sing and you're still excited to sing that is really hard because all that uh all the hits we both love doing uh i can't really choose there must be one though that you love you look well, forward for, to. for a reason for all of them rabbit gertia i know pleasing you but for for a good particular reason i think that me and dave was doing this song for about a year on stage and we knew it was going to be a hit and the record company was saying it's a lovely song boys but it's not a hit and we did this song on a tv show that had a a good viewing rating and he got so many phone calls our manager the next day said i've got to put it out and that was Ain't No Pleasing You, so I'm going to go for that. Got a brand new Greatest Hits album out, and it's fantastic. And this is the right time of year to bring out this album, because Christmas is coming, the goose is getting fat, that's and it. we're all going to be playing your CD and having a good sing-along. And that's the good thing about you. There's no airs and graces. It's not nonsense kind of arty-farty music. It's, it's music you can sing along to. Well, a lot of it is. Alex, yeah, I mean, we do ballads, we do love songs. Um, but basically, it is a happy, a happy sort of a, an act. I mean, like the Cyborg song. I mean, it, you've got to be good to sing along to that, but they do manage it because quick words in it but they do manage it they <laughs> that, did it Glastonbury anyway that's my next question how do you do it and how do you remember it and have you ever got halfway through a song and forgot the rest of it uh, you just make it up if you forget it you <laughs> get out of it that way we've been we've been experienced enough now to uh, just do things at the drop of a hat really that was so unique wasn't it Chaz when you did that in the beginning or the rabbit 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 I mean no. I can't do it how do you get your tongue round it literally well it's uh, like a tongue twister um, exactly like a tongue twister once you get the hang of it uh, you you never forget it but like dave says we often and we, we change like things like the sideboard song that goes through many many phases uh we started doing a bit of scat singing in it a couple of years ago now that we've drifted off and we go into a little bit of the diddlum song at the moment but uh, this time in six months time we might do something else in the middle it just happens on stage we never rehearse it that's all part of the fun that's why we enjoy every gig that we do because there's always something different that we're going to do we all listen to each other Whereas a lot of bands don't. They go on and just churn out their hits and are interested in their own sound. But if they does a particular bass bit, we, you know, that's, that's different or whatever, we'll react to it. And sometimes me and Mick, the, the, the drummer, will do something different. There's always... Uh, it is because we listen to each other and there's not a lot of bands that do. do so there's, that. there's not two shows that, that are the same then? The, no. Not the Cyborg song, it's never the same twice. In fact, we did Des, Des Mel yesterday and he just chucked it out to do a bit of Cyborg song. We didn't know what key we were going to do it in because we didn't <laughs> did it on guitars for a change, but it came out good. It's basically the same for the for the uh, the general public. You know, they, they'll, they'll, they'll hear all the choruses and the verses, but there's always something a little bit different along the line. I notice you're touring again and you're up and down the country. I mean, you're doing uh, old shot Huddersfield you're in uh, Watford Chingford uh, you're going to Hornchurch Swindon you're at the Opera House in Wakefield up and down the country when did you do your first gig together what was the year yeah I just got to get a plug in we're doing a special Christmas one at the uh, Shepherd's Bush Empire December the 15th so right. a few tickets left for that okay. uh, so what did you say when did you first yeah, do what it? was the first when, when was your first gig uh, first uh, uh, gig we'd, although we'd been playing at parties together for a long time we was doing a radio show Show with Albert Lee for a country show and the phone went and it was one of our mates he said uh, I've got to pull out of a gig tonight in a pub somewhere that's the first one I can remember Chaz might think different but yeah I was it over Uxbridge somewhere and we it? went down there and the two boxers was there Chris yeah. Finnegan and that's he's probably the first yeah. Chaz and Dave gig wasn't it yeah what year was that was 71 72 I can't remember yeah, about that, about right. that time. so we're now in 2005 six, yeah. some, something like that how's it changed or is it still as exciting for you yeah, now we love to play you see that's the, that's the big secret we've been asked that question millions of times we just love playing we love it there's always something different I mean right now there's uh, the, the highlight of Chaz and Dave's show uh, many highlights I know but uh, <laughs> the new one is uh, we do a boogie woogie version of uh, 12 Street Rag which we did at Glastonbury went an absolute storm and that's like that just the roof lifts off and it's great and we've only had that in yet a couple of years I don't think we've had it in the act, act, act that long no. probably about a year or if yeah. that just 
just before Glastonbury we started to do it just sort of went into it one night and we sort of me and the drummer sort of got into the feel of it and uh, it went down good and we just play it and it's uh, it develops, we, it develops. It? We and love it, it. It's, always, it's always something a bit different in that there again I mean we never rehearsed it I just uh, no. did it one night and then I, it went <laughs> from there how hedonistic and showbiz was it back in the 70s and early 80s I mean was it rock and roll was it like you know Oasis throwing tellies out of hotel windows um, I mean, for other people, we never bothered what they got up to. We, we were only interested in what we did, and that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to uh, sit down, write songs, go out and gig. And we knew once we got together, we were an act. There was going to be an act called Chaz and Dave. I mean, before then, we were in different bands. And one of the main reasons we got together, we were fed up with a band splitting up. You know, you just get in a band that you like, and they split up. So we thought, well, if we get together, we ain't going to split up. It'd be Chaz and Dave. We'll earn a living for the rest of our lives. And uh, that's what we basically did. And uh, wrote songs along the way. And hopefully, we said, you know, we might get a few hits as well, which we did. The memory's an interesting thing, because you forget how big you were and still are, in fact but I mean I mean how hedonistic was it did you get the women throwing themselves at you were you drunk oh, every course. night yeah <laughs> most definitely yeah, but yeah. Cool. you're too busy to enjoy all that you're just up and down the country and doing millions of TV in fact I think we held a record for the most TV appearances in one night we was on every single channel that was available <laughs> one night yeah uh, we had a few few drunken parties in the past <laughs> yeah well, there's, there's been a few end of tour parties oh yeah yeah. do you still enjoy the, the, the smallness of your show and I don't mean that in a condescending way when Britney Spears goes on stage now, she's got 15,000 trucks and yeah. 15,000 people working on it, and then she's got this big screen. She don't sing a note live half no, the no, time. Terrible. But, I mean, you guys, you just go and yeah. do your stuff, and then you clear off. I mean, is that part of your success, that you can just turn up and do it? We can We've been there, done that. We, we used to have uh, trucks and lighting systems and this that, and the other, and we sort of went along with it because there was so much else going on. But as soon as we, we, we got sensible, we just got rid of the lot and we're better off for it it's just a piano bass and drums we do if we do a theater we do an acoustic set in the first half where we play the guitars talk to the audience uh banjos um just uh, general we call it our front room set where we just like and then the second half we do all the hits and it's only the three of us me dave and mick we can play anywhere you know with a small venue or somewhere like dustenbury and it's often said to us, there's three of you, but you sound like a full band. I mean, over the years, uh, 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 years ago, we used to have Albert Lee sitting in with us, guitar player. He's a good old, good mate of ours. And uh, he didn't sit in, this I'm going back 20, 30 years. He didn't sit in for about five years, and he came and sat in, he went, I can't sit in with you no more. He said, there's no holes. You haven't left no holes for me to play. And I think we don't. You know. All the holes are either filled up by a piano lick or a, drum, or a bass lick or, or a drum yeah. lick. We've evolved our style through not having a guitar player. I think uh, yeah, Joe Brown said the same thing he didn't he says no I was to fill up he said I can't see him with you boys the other, the other thing I noticed from reading your bio is you say you don't want any fancy effects you don't even want echo or reverb or any of that because it's good enough by itself yeah yeah. we yeah, think if it takes the meanness away sometimes echo yeah the, especially uh, reverb echo um, which is like a full sound we like uh, the old rock and roll echo is effective on, on some stuff but uh yeah, I mean, if it ain't there in the first place, you can't put it there with effects. And the ones that use most effects are the ones that ain't got it there in the first place. You mentioned the word Glastonbury a few times in the interview, and I've saved it till the end, because to me, there must be no greater privilege or honour than for an old act, as you would be deemed by today's yeah. society, to be asked to go to the most current, topical and up-to-date event ever. That's to be, to be asked to go to that. Yeah. I, I mean, how did you feel? Well, that's Chaz and Dave for you. We've been doing loads of festivals, you see. Uh, and when uh, we did Glasson, but we knew that we'd go down good, because we always go down good. We always give people a good time. But we weren't prepared for that amount of people to know every word of every song that we sung. I mean, there was like 18,000 plus more behind. had come to see us. They weren't, they weren't, we weren't like supporting somebody where you, you know, it just so happens that they see you because but they've come to see someone else. They came, they walked across the, the, the place to, to see us, which is great, and sang all our songs, like Dave said. I think that's really the, the good example of where age doesn't matter. There's no one else like us, but 
our music is well we, we, we love it and other people love it as well they just don't even come in it don't matter there's a lot of rockers our age still going around what's still, still going I mean if you're good you're good and that's it you can go forever if you're good and if you can perform you can perform yeah of course yeah, yeah. The, the interesting thing that I was thinking about when I was coming in today was who have tried to copy you and who have been successful and I think the answer is none and no one yeah, a lot of people have been influenced by us. I mean, the Libertines, for instance, they said they started to play because they heard us when they were kids. I don't mean influence, I mean actually copy. Because what, oh. what happens now, of course, is you get a success story and then they create another five of them that are never, ever work. But, I mean, you guys were just so distinctive. I don't think anybody even tried, did they? Yeah, no, I, I, there's, a, there's a few, like, tribute Chaz and Dave's going about. Daz and Shave and things yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah. Are they any good? I don't know. They ain't too bad, but a, bloke, a mate of mine was in Cyprus on holiday and he phoned me up he said, I've just walked past this hotel. He said, there's a big poster up. The original Chaz and Dave are on tonight. <gasps> I said, you better go in there and tell that geezer. You know, because he, he might be a Greek bloke. He might not know they're not the real ones. <laughs> I don't think anybody could uh, do your act as well as you do. As I say, it's so great to see you because I grew up watching you on TV and you always made me smile. And I think that's right. the greatest compliment you can have as a performer, isn't it? That's well, nice, Alex. I yeah. think so, yeah. Listen, this new CD is out. It's called uh, The Greatest Hits. It's got all of your classic songs. And uh, Dave, let's end with your favourite. Right, I, I'm, I'm going to answer the question the same as Chaz did. Uh, it's very difficult. All them songs are our babies. But I want to be the first one on this new album to play, or you'll be the first one to play it, the 12th Street Rag off of our new album. Okay, Would you brilliant. do that? I will. You'll be the first one to play it. I'm really looking forward to hearing it, and uh, thank you again for coming in. You are just a breath of fresh air to thank people you, in show thank business, you. and thank God you're still around and doing the business. Because yeah, thanks, started. Alex. I only just yeah. started. <laughs> <laughs> and you're never going to stop touring. No, it carries no. on forever. No, yeah. rock, to, rock us till we die. That's it's, us. It's, it's kept us young so far, so we ain't going to give it up now. Congratulations, and thank you very much for coming in today. Chaz and Dave on Capital Gold. Cheers, Alex.